which we have a lot to say, but none coming to mind at this point. They were here in, in Silver Lake, California. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm now crying from laughing. <laughs> and we're in my apartment, which I made into, um, I pretended it was a beach house. It's my imaginary beach house. I don't know if you get that feeling, but to me it feels very, like, serene. Your imaginary beach house on the east side. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm nowhere near any sort of... Which is great. Because my apartment's really little, and I thought about how um, vacation houses are always really low because you spend mm -hmm. all your time at the beach, mm -hmm. and I have this gorgeous backyard, so it's okay that my house is small because I'm going to spend all my time on the beach, except that I don't have a beach, so it's not but a But you do have a teepee. I do have a teepee. We'll look at that in a second. Which is a teepee. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the teepee. I like it because I think that, um, I read this by... Angelina Brondellini or whatever that lady's designer is in vogue all the time mm -hmm. that when you don't have any architecture you just have to over decorate you, have to and you just go and you just go for it and I think that that's what you have to do. and it's kind of fun if you're in a small space because you can do it and it's affordable <laughs> yeah. because eventually you run out of room well, yeah my apartment's sort of perfect and I've wallpapered yeah. every surface yeah. <laughs> I could do that in a you know 12 yeah, 12,000 exactly. square foot house and then if you find just a few good pieces of art good meaning like from a vintage store or something like that, and then pop well, them out. Well, good whatever. I mean, yeah. good is arbitrary, but you should have original art. Yeah. I you mean, and I think lithos and stuff, like, there's so many great posters and things, um. but it should be something that speaks to you, and it should not be from a museum gift shop. <laughs> With Monet underneath I feel it. very strong <laughs> about that. Um, Leslie and I recently took a road trip to Austin, which was kind of awesome, and we stopped... The main point, really, of the road trip was to go to the Prada Marfa that lasted about <laughs> 10 minutes. But it was amazing, and we got some good photos out of it. We drove for four days, and then we could go Basically, we drove with fast, and we're like, oh, shit, and we threw it in reverse right in the middle of the street. And the, because that's how fast the Marfa go, Prada, Marfa, Texas, is, like, right on the border, and it's not... It's not a, a Prada store. It's an, it's an art installation, and it was built, like, what, like, 2005? Yeah. And I've always wanted to go because the pictures are unbelievable. It's literally in the middle of nowhere, and it's just this, like, little yeah. glass jewel box of, like, you know, sort of 90s minimalism, even though it wasn't built in the 90s. And it has the scale of Leslie's Silver Fox Volvo. Literally, we have a picture where the Volvo's in front of the store, and it's about as big. Yeah, it's teeny. Yeah. But that was but, awesome. But, and you're yeah. the perfect person to take because no yeah. one else would have been this excited. <laughs> to drive nonstop for four days for that. Well, we also saw Psychics in Sedona. I just started a photo blog called Visual Threats because basically what it is, and I'm excited about that. I diagnosed Max on the road trip with visual <laughs> Oh, right. I don't know if you remember. That was the name originated from Leslie. So, during the day, he's got three cameras, different formats, and he's like, shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh, I have to change formatting. Right. Shoot, shoot, shoot. And then as soon as, like, it went dark, he started yelling at the radio. I had to shut <laughs> my eyesight went down But it's like, visually. if you've ever had a bird and you wanted to shut up, you put a, a towel over its cage because it thinks it's nighttime. But you put a towel over his cage and he just started and yelling. My, oh, the ears kicked in and then I just started talking back to the radio. Yeah, because That's what because happens when, when you're on the road, it's so dark. There's nothing. Like, there's no, there's yeah. nothing to see. I mean, you're just driving through blackness and it was just too much for your <laughs> ADHD. It was too much. I had to latch onto something. I had to, because we were listening to This American Life and I had like 300 opinions about everything he said. <laughs> you were also in conflict trouble. with each other. It was in other. conflict with each other. <laughs> my um, yoga thinks that I have to work on my neutral mind. Um, so what, why are we doing this? Why are we, um, we are... I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'm not sure either, but I think that once we do... We're gonna, what we're going to try to do with the blog is we're going to try to meet people that are designers and artists and kind of get their process and make fun of them and show their work. I think it's basically... I'm not here to make fun of people. No, I mean make fun of them in the fun way. I'm here to like see people's stuff and ask them questions and uh, pet oh their dogs. you got so Pollyanna right there. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go around <laughs> and now think that you're going to go into people's yeah. homes and make fun of them? How many people are going to invite us over? A lot. <laughs> I'm here to be really nice and polite and write thank you We're notes. We're good cat <laughs> No. Um, to apologize for this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> to calm down my oral Tourette's when it pops out. Um, we're going to check out your TV. Was Leslie has this really cool TV that she painted where she used to put your mopeds in it, but now I think it's taking on a new form. Oh, yeah. Well, I needed a place to keep my mopeds because it wasn't everyone, and I decided that I wanted a TV also, so I made a TV to keep my mopeds in because you have to keep them you know, dry and warm and safe. Uh, it's in my backyard. It's not like in my parking spot or anything. And for New Year's, I cleaned it out and made it into the VIP TV, and it was really fun. And then you let these a part of a moped gang called the Gas Cats. Leslie's 
teepee, which is kind of fab, and she's completely art directed in my shoes. Like, or art directed, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> sure, um, all the with a little bit of purple and pink, I just the whole thing is working like an Easter egg, and I love it. Um, <laughs> so, this is where Les the site of Leslie's uh, debauched 2012 New York this party. This is where I yeah. woke up this year. <laughs> Good morning, world. Well, I had a great, <laughs> it's a brand I had a great year. party. I had a great party. <laughs> you know it's a good party if you end up waking up in this. <laughs> and your bed I is woke probably up in my own yard. 100 feet away. <laughs> no, there's three people in my bed. Yeah. Because people kept getting really tired. And not in the fun way like you're thinking. They just kept No, but like people were getting sleepy, so I kept putting them to bed. I said, no, we'll wake you up when it's time to go back because they were out of town or so they couldn't just like go to their own house because they, they were visiting. And then once I put everyone to bed in my bed, I realized that there was no place for me to sleep, and I didn't really have the heart to wake them up and send them somewhere else. So I just laid down in my own TV and woke up here. But, you know, it was all uphill from this there. This is a little detritus left over from the New Year's, kind of scattered throughout the yard, which I think is kind of awesome. It was a great New Year's. So of Leslie's sprawling studio. I like to call it a mistake. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and it's mistake. full of like kind of Miss Havisham glamour because it's a little bit falling away but that's what makes I it romantic. I love that. Yeah. I love Miss Havisham. <laughs> <laughs> Where there's not one like avaricious one that just takes it down and then brings the rest of the My booze. sister and I had this amazing plan for a fitness it, we were just really silly one morning, and she works at this bookstore and was telling me about all these fitness books, and it just blew my mind that you would read about exercise, because they seem sort of like very separate ways of doing things. <laughs> and so she was telling me, yeah, there's lots of books about how to get in shape when you're not in shape, like how to get back <laughs> into fitness. And I, and I said, I'm going to start an exercise program called Run You Fat Bitch. <laughs> 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 and it's like, straight Page to the one. Run, run You Fat, fat Bitch. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be a very short book, <laughs> but, it's a an, best <laughs> but it's an easy read, and I, I think it's like something a lot of people could relate to. <laughs> recently, and this is like years ago, I recently my, comes sis like a my, my sister texted me and she's like, running bad bitch. <laughs> so it's one of those inside jokes that's like still in both of our brains forever. You can sell the book in different sizes, so it just comes with shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Run, oh, run. Why don't come with an audio soundtrack and it's just like for rating people? Yeah, exactly. Put down the F and fuck and get your fat ass out. The book's not making you run. Yeah. <laughs> Go, girl. You get a lot of, you can carry a lot of the books. And rain check to end on a really wonderful note. It's found the sun. Oh.